Welcome to the Spoken Tutorial on Scripts and Functions with Scilab. Let us start with a brief introduction to the file formats in Scilab. When several commands are to be executed, it may be more convenient to write these statements into a file with Scilab Editor. These are called as script files. To execute the commands written in such a script file, the exec function can be used, followed by the name of the script file. These files generally have the extension .sce or .sci depending on its content. Files having the .sci extension contains scilab functions and or user defined functions. Executing these files loads the functions into Scilab environment but does not execute them. Whereas files having the .sce extension contains Scilab functions and user defined functions. Please remember that the convention of naming the extension as .sce and .sci are not rules but a convention followed by the Scilab community. Let us open the Scilab console window on the computer. Check on the present working directory by typing the command pwd on the command prompt. Go to the taskbar of the Scilab console window and click on the editor option to open the Scilab editor. I have already typed the commands in a file and saved it as hello world.sce. Therefore, I will open that file using open a file shortcut icon. Select hello world.sce file and click on open. You may type the commands in the new file and save this file to the current working directory as hello world.sce through the file menu. Go to the execute button on the Scilab editors menu bar and select load into Scilab option. This will load the file into the Scilab console. After loading the file on the console, the script produces the output as you see. It contains both the commands and the resulting output for the respective commands. Now change the value of A to 1. In the editor, go to the file menu and click save. We can also execute the script directly from the Scilab interpreter using the exec command and giving the path to the script file. As exec into brackets into double quotes hello world dot sce that is the file name and press enter the script file produces a similar output with the use of exec function let us now talk about functions a function definition starts with the keyword function and ends with the keyword end function I have already saved a function file in function.sci using the Scilab editor. I will open that file. As you see, the function is defined here. In this, degrees is the output parameter and radians is the input parameter. To the function named radians to degrees. I will load this function in Scilab using the execute menu option. The function is now loaded in the Scilab console. It can also be loaded using the exec command. Once a function is loaded, it can be called like any other Scilab function by passing specific arguments to that function. Make a mental note 
of the percent sign and recall the reason of its use. Now let us find values for radians to degrees of percent pi by 2 and radians to degrees of percent pi by 4. percent pi by 2 and radians to degrees percent pi by 4. Now we will see a function with more than one input and output arguments. This function will take polar coordinate as input argument and returns rectangular coordinates as output argument. I will open the file which I have already typed. Here you can see x and y are the output parameters and r and theta are the input parameters to the function polar to rect. I will load this function in Scilab using the exec option. Once the function is loaded, we need to call the function. This function requires two input arguments and two output arguments. Therefore, r is equal to 2, theta is equal to 45 and now we will call it x1, comma y1 the output parameters is equal to function name polar to rect into bracket r comma theta and press enter. You will see the values of x1 and y1. One of the interesting features of Scilab is you can define any number of functions in a single .sci file. While doing this, please remember that by default all the variables defined in a function are local. The scope of these variables used in a particular function ends with the end function keyword of the function definition. Advantages of these feature is that we can use same variable names in different function. These variables won't get mixed up unless we use the global option. To know more about the global variable, type help global. Please note that if any variable is to be watched or monitored inside a function, then disp is required. Inside a function file, you can check for yourself the effect of putting a semicolon at the end of a statement. Also check this for disp statements. Inline functions. Functions are segments of code that have well-defined input and output as well as local variables. The simplest way to define a function is by using the command def. Scilab allows the creation of inline functions and are especially useful when the body of the function is short. This can be done with the help of the function def. It takes two string parameters. The first string defines the interface to the function. The second string defines the statement of the function. The def command defines the function in a scilab and also loads it. There is no need to load the function defined by using def command explicitly through the execute menu option. Let us see an example to illustrate this concept. I will open a file inline.sci where I have written the inline function. I will resize the editor window 
as mentioned earlier the first string defines the function declaration and the second string defines the statement of the function we will load this function in scilab editor and use it to find the values of degrees to radians of 90 and degrees to radians of 45 a function should call not just other functions within itself but also itself this is recursive calling of a function this is required for example when writing a function to calculate the factorial of an integer let us extend the discussion on file formats in scilab as mentioned earlier scilab uses two types of file formats namely the sce file format and the sci file format the files with the .sce file extension are the script files which contain the scilab commands that you enter during an interactive kind of scilab session they can comprise comment lines utilized in documenting the function and they can also use the command exec to execute the script the files with the .sci file extension are the function files that start with the function statement a single .sci file can have multiple function definitions which themselves contain any number of scilab statements that perform operations on the function argument or on the output variables after they have been evaluated this brings us to the end of the spoken tutorial on scripts and functions in scilab there are many other functions in scilab which will be covered in other spoken tutorials keep watching the scilab links the spoken tutorial has been created by the free and open source software in science and engineering education more information on the fossi project could be obtained from fossi.in or scilab.in supported by the national mission on education through ict mhrd government of india for more information visit spoken-tutorial.org/nmeict-intro this is anuradha amritkar from iit bombay signing off thanks for joining us goodbye